In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a simple post implementation site survey. I'm using a software called Ekahow for this. And you also need a dongle that listen to Wi-Fi and send the data to this software. So it's a, I'm using a NIC 300 Ekahow dongle for this. All right. Here I have Ekahow site survey open. So the first step is to add floor plans. Click on the plus, add ground floor. Click on the plus again, add the first floor. And then the next step is to scale. So there is a scale on this floor plan. Four meters. And then let's go to the first floor. Seems like the this, this is 6.6 .6 meters. Right now we have scaled and the next thing is to mark the coverage area. So here I would say, go to here, I want coverage in this area. And double click to complete. And also mark the coverage area on the first floor. Double click to finish. Next step is to go to the survey mode and select continuous survey. And then you have to walk around the house and you have to click on the location inside the house where you are exactly because there is no GPS location for like how to know where you are inside the house. So by clicking what you're saying is okay, I'm at this location, but regardless of whether you click or not, like how continuously collect Wi-Fi samples. That's why we selected the continuous survey option. I have speed up this part of the video so it will show where I walked everywhere inside the house and where I clicked so now in the bathroom then to the bedroom all around the bedroom so that you should make sure that there is not more than two meters gap between two walks because Ekahao site survey in the default settings will consider that within two meters with left or right to up and down within a sample point as known data then i'll go to the backyard as well and then the garage it, it's very important to go into any area that there is a wall in between for example if a cow try to predict the coverage in the garage based on the data that's collected in the living room it will not consider the wall so you need to walk in all the areas now upstairs i walk through the stairs and to the wardrobe and to the bedrooms right now we have this echo file with all the data samples if you want to have a quick look let's see the coverage all access point well this coverage you see is not accurate because this is the coverage from all the access points that a cow site survey heard so you want to select only your access points the this is what i usually do you go to action you would select all and select everything else as my access point deselect from my and then you can expand and see that none of the access points are ticked as my access points. And then now you can go and quickly use your SSID. This is my SSID, so I select that one. And that would select your access point. 
now you can see that i only have one access point at home and it's a 2.4 gigahertz and it's also on channel 10 which is pretty bad but anyway so it selected my access point it's selected but it's not ticked as one of my access points so what i'm going to do here actions select as my access point now it ticked this access point and then if you go here and select my access points you can see the coverage from your access point and the second thing is you can see that ekhao has placed at the access points for you automatically based on the signal it heard but most of the time it's not very accurate so you have to most of the time manually place your access point this doesn't affect the coverage but if you generate a report it, it's better that it show up in the correct place and especially in this case you will see that my access point even though it's on the ground floor it's automatically placed on the first floor by a cow so what i would do is i would delete this and when you delete it goes to the un, un not placed on my map any map access points and then you can go and right click oh actually you can manually place on go to ground floor and go here and select place on current map so it will place it here and then i would move it where exactly it is placed somewhere here you could also increase the signal strength requirement so it will kind of more accurately show where the access point should be like the access sh point should be where the the signal strength is strongest so it looks about right now we should actually take check the coverage of our access point so how, how do you set the signal strength for a decent internet access the wi-fi through wi-fi you you want to have a stronger signal than minus 70 dbm and as a kind of general rule this may not be 100 percent accurate but you can think that the ekahao site survey dongle you use the nick 300 you can see that here under the survey do you see the the device i use it's a nick 300 card which i will show a photo in the video is maybe four times more sensitive than your average mobile phone you, uh, you actually have to test this and compare if you want to get a real accurate value but if you just think that it's four times more sensitive you could say well let's reduce 6 dbs because 3 db is twice the signal strength so if you look for a signal stronger by 6 dbs that would say you are setting the sensitivity to uh, uh, let's say a mobile phone you're using so instead of checking the coverage for minus 70 dbm we would actually check the coverage for minus 64 dbm so i would go and set it to minus 64 and then the second the gray area for if it is let's say minus 67 it's a half is half the signal strength compared to minus 64 right so with this setting if you look at the diagram you have only selected my access points and your only your single access point is selected as your access point so this is the coverage from your access point and you can see the host name if you go and tick the name well there is no host name anyways so on the ground floor i see the coverage is not bad except for the this front bedroom which actually i personally experienced a lot of wi-fi dropouts and not very good coverage here and then another thing i wanted to show is the storage area for example like in this storage area it looks like it actually has coverage right the problem here is that i didn't walk so what Ekhao does is it take these samples from here 
and it it doesn't know that there is a wall here because we didn't tell the software that there is a wall. It calculates the coverage inside the storage area, thinking that it's free space loss. So actually, it could be a this could be like a concrete box here, but it will still show coverage unless you actually walked inside this and took some samples so that like how would definitely know that what the actual coverage inside this. So if this was a critical area that I'm looking to cover, I would definitely walk inside and get some samples. And showing cover a cow showing coverage inside here is, is not accurate. One more thing I want to show is like going back to this point. If you want to see what actually a cow collected, all the samples, this is what you need to do. You should go to options, select super accurate, and then go to detailed mode. Now you see these boxes, usually each of these box is 0.7 meters. Yeah, so this is kind of the raw data that Ekahau collected. And this is everything that Ekahau knows about this site. So there are these black spo uh, the white spaces that it doesn't know. And when you go to very accurate and smooth, it will interpolate between data points and show you uh, this nice green coverage but it's just a guess uh, well it's a it's a prediction let's say so if you go back to this you can see in the garage it seems like there is only one point and there are some data points collected along the staircase but nothing on the storage area and you, if you really want to drill into the samples like the data points it collected, you can go to the arrow here. Do you see that at the bottom right hand side? And then it bring up this display. And if you want to look at the survey data, go to survey. I want to look at 2.4. You need to use a bigger screen for this. And if you focus on the garage, you can see that in the garage, there's only one sample collected. See, this is the only data sample that it collected. And the strongest access point is my access point. And then this is my printer. And you can see when you walk, it collected data points here, 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 and here. And you can actually see what the values it collected. So this information is very useful when you are kind of trying to figure out why in some places there is coverage and like for example, there was only one data point collected inside the garage and it would show full coverage, which I don't know, maybe not 100% accurate. And then storage shows coverage because there was no data samples connected. You need to be careful about these kind of things. Right, so if you want to get out of this mode, go back, go to planning. And then we would normally for general purpose, you would go use very accurate and smooth, so it shows you a nice heat map. But it's better that you know that you can go and look for more details if you find something strange. In general, any AP that's not one of your APs, you can call it a rogue AP. So how do you see and, and what do you do with the rogue APs in a, in, when you do a, this kind of site survey? So this is what I usually do. So I will go to selected access points and then select the rogue access points one by one. So they show the coverage. For example, this one, I selected this one. This is not one of my access point and it has a SSID of Netgear 64. Yeah. So I think it's from my neighbor. So I would move it outside. It's not mine. So and I don't care. And this is my printer. So it's it's one of my access points, but the problem is it's not broadcasting the same SSID as my internet uh, the access point. So I, would, I don't want to select it, but I would position it in the correct place and keep it there. And if I want to see the coverage of my printer, yeah, select this one. I see I probably won't be able to print from the first bedroom but it has enough coverage in the living room and the first floor oh, as well, yeah. So yeah, so that's what you usually do with the rogue access points. 
you can if when you look at the coverage if you can if it looks like it's outside you can move them outside but well it's just for reporting purposes and then if you would like well you can generate a report so go to reporting you go to one click reporting well i don't want to see all these things data rates to put ah, just want to see signal strength and both flows and in pdf format let's try okay so this is the report without using any template the built-in capacity oh. Yeah, so it will show you the floor plans. Oh, this is the coverage on the f upper floor. This is the coverage on the ground floor. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, simple report.